In this lesson, we're gonna go ahead and create our index for our HTML and CSS inside of Dreamweaver for our Lego site. So going to Dreamweaver, you wanna make sure that you've got your Lego site selected up here, and that's in that drop-down menu that we mapped in the last lesson. We're then gonna create a file. You can hit Create New here, here, up in the File panel, underneath File and New, whatever you wanna do, but the first file we wanna create is that index. Index is the main page of every single website. So when you go to google.com or cnn.com or facebook.com or instagram.com, TikTok, wherever, doesn't matter, you're going to index.html inside of their web server folder. And so every single website's address is defaulted to that file first. Your home page will always be called index.html on every single website. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an HTML file. You don't really need to do anything at this point. Um, the title is what appears in the tab at the top of the page when you are um, viewing it in a browser. We are creating an HTML5 and we don't have any CSS yet so we're not going to attach anything. So we're going to go ahead and hit create at that point and that's going to create an HTML file on your page. And it's not saved though. So notice over here on Lego, we don't have an index.html. We don't even have an untitled one over here. And over here it says untitled one. And that's because we've just created an HTML file, but we haven't saved it to our files yet. So we want to make sure that we are going to save it and give it a name inside of our, our um, files. And then we can create a CSS and attach our CSS. So we have a split view right here where if I were to go into my body tag and I were to type something like hello, you'll see that it will appear up here in my live view because I'm currently in split view. Something else you want to make sure you have if you need it is to open up the window panel for properties. And that properties will allow you to refresh your page, which is useful when your page for your live view isn't refreshing. So I'm going to open up my properties and I'm going to go ahead and dock it at the bottom. And if you don't have this open, it's okay, but trust me, it becomes helpful. So we're going to see those changes. If I just go to code view up at the top here, you'll see I'm only looking at my code, can't see my live view. And if I just go to live, I can only see the live view and not my code. Split view is the best because you can see both at the same time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete the word hello and we're going to save this because I want an index to be saved before I start making changes and I want it to be a file over here in my Lego folder. So I'm going to go ahead and go to file and save as. When I click save as, I am defaulted to my Lego folder because I have it chosen over here in my files and here we're going to name it index. You can put the .html if you want to, but you can see right here under save as type, it's gonna to default to that. So we should be good to go, especially since we made this file and made it in HTML5, and it's saying in our code that it's an HTML document. So it should default to a .html file. And we're just saving that in our Lego folder sitting right out here next to these folders. And we're gonna hit save. Once you hit save and you've actually saved your file to the right location and told the computer where to put it, you should now be seeing that over here in your files panel. What we're gonna do now is create that CSS because what we've done is we've created the HTML but there's nowhere to put our CSS at this point. We could go into our head tag and we could create a style tag here and we could then type our style CSS into here. There was a previous lesson on how the differences between inline, internal, and external styles. And the reason we don't wanna put a style inside of our head as an internal style, or even in line inside of our code inside the body, is because we wanna be able to link to this from multiple pages. We're making a multi-page website. We're gonna have a home page. we're gonna have a page about fire Legos, and space Legos, and Viking Legos, and then a contact page, and all of those pages are going to look roughly the same, meaning they're all going to use the same style. And since we don't want to have to code and make changes on six different files, we can just do it on the one external style sheet and it cascades across all six files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new CSS. You can do this a couple different ways. Um, the way that you were taught previously is to go to file and do a new file right here where we do a new CSS. When you click CSS, we're going to then hit create in the new document section, and that will create a second file up here called untitled2. Now, you can see again, untitled2, not saved yet. So we're going to go ahead and save that. 
to our folder. We want to make sure that our files are saved so that way we can actually link them. The computer can't connect your index to your CSS until there are two files that are saved in a certain location and they're told how to find each other because the computer doesn't know what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and name this. I'm going to name it Lego underscore styles and I can put the dot CSS if I want to or you can just let it be because it is a CSS file. It'll put that extension on the end and I'm going to click save and put it right next to my Lego index. That should then pop up over here in your files panel. Now you've got Lego styles here and index here. What's the kicker here is you can actually close your Lego styles at this point because what we're going to do is we're going to link them. So that's going to happen in the next lesson. Make sure you go file save all or file save so you've saved all your files and don't lose them.